Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for this day that he's made, this day that we are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. Welcome to Christian Church for All Nations. So glad you're here in the house to our media church family. Want to take the time to thank you so much for joining in online. And if you are watching online, let us know where you're watching from and also take the time to share that stream. Amen. We're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer on this day. And for those who are watching by way of the stream, if you have any prayer requests, if you have any prayer needs, let us know how we can pray for you. We believe in the power of prayer. Amen. And we're going to declare and decree what thus saith the Lord. So for those who are here and if you're watching at home, if you're able, let's stand to our feet as we go before the Lord in prayer on this glorious day. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, this day that you have made, this day that we are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. Lord, we release this service into your hands and we say, have your way amongst us this day, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for the move of God. We thank you for your outpouring, Lord. Lord, we lift up everyone who needs a touch in their body. Lord, we thank you, Lord, your word says, by your stripes, Hallelujah. we are healed. Lord, we stand on there, what your word says. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for restoration. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this house, Lord, that we are going to be a beacon of light to our community that surround us. So, Lord, have your way amongst us this day. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Yes, it's Lord. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, let's go before the Lord with praise and worship. I was glad when they said unto me, Hallelujah. let us go unto the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy.
you, Jesus. You are holy, and we bless your holy name. We thank you for your presence here this morning, oh God. You move mountain, told the wind and wave be still. You cast out demons, hallelujah, till the empty soul be filled. Now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom in your name. Gave us power and the keys to do the same. Will you hold redemption? Thank you, Jesus. Made accusers drop their stones. You showed us mercy. Thank you, Lord. With your mighty miracles. Now there's breakthrough. Yes, there is. Now there's freedom in your name. Gave us power and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim in Jesus' name. Walls fall down in Jesus' name. Strongholds break in Jesus' name. Amen. While we are healed in Jesus' name. Miracle in Jesus' name. Pour it out. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. You crush the darkness. Made a fool of death and grave, oh King Jesus, you make royals out of slaves. Now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom. In Thank your you, Lord. You gave us power, yeah, yeah, and the keys to do the same. And now we proclaim in Jesus' name. Walls fall down in Jesus' name. Strongholds break in Jesus' name. Whoa, amen. Now we are healed in Jesus' name. Miracle in Jesus' name. Pour it out in Jesus' name. I am living by faith. 
Thank you, Lord. Yeah, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that through you we can do all things. Not some things, but we can do all yes, things yes. through Christ. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power that you've given us, Lord God. That is not in our own might, that is not in our own strength. The Lord is in the strength and the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just give you all the praise today, Lord, as always, because you deserve the glory, you deserve all the honor, you deserve the praise, and we just lift up your great name. Hallelujah, Jesus. All the honor and all the praise goes to and belongs to you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We magnify you. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Power, power, power. Yes, Jesus. Yes, we Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you are here and that we welcome you to have your way amongst us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing, what you're continuing to do, what you are going yes, to do, Lord yes, God. We activate faith on today, Lord God. We're not going to be moved by what we see, Lord yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. We echo the authority that we have in you, Lord oh, Jesus, yeah. that there is power when you call upon the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we tap in. We access what we have through you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, oh, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We just lift your name up. Don't be afraid to give him praise. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yana mama nasi, rabba mama nasi, roko shanda desi, da 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 da. Yero mama nasi, hallelujah, Jesus. Holo mama nasi, rabba mama nasi, teko kobo mama nasan, da 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 da. Yes, shanda desi, roko mama mama nasi, rabba mama nasi, rabba mama nasi, rabba mama nasi, da da da. Jesus. Jesus, oh, no Jesus. Like your yes, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. What a beautiful name. Yeah. What a beautiful yeah. name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name. 
beautiful name it is, the name, we'll say it one more time, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the beautiful, what a beautiful name it is, that name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you for refreshing, Lord, that the presence is raining down, Lord, upon us this moment. And, Lord, we are refreshed as we spend time in your presence. Yes, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord, for that refreshing that you're watering those dry places, those spiritual places that may have wilted. They're coming alive. They're coming yeah. alive. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we speak for that name. Speak it out for yourself. Declare what the Lord of God says, how we receive all that you have for us. Yes. Amen and amen. Isn't God good? I mean, he's good all the time and all the time. Our God is so amazing. And we're going to continue in this atmosphere as we get ready to worship the Lord with our temporal means here in the sanctuary in just a moment. And for those who are here today in just a moment, going to have you come to the front where you're going to present your tithe, present your offering as an act of worship unto the Lord, saying, Lord, I give this back to you. We're going to take time to pray over it when you come down to the altar. Take time to pray over that seed that you're going to sow. If you would like to give by way of text, you can text the word GIVE to 248-368-0310. Or you can write your checks out to Christian Church for All Nations or put down CC Fan. Our address is 14205 East 12 Mile here in the beautiful city of Warren, Michigan, 48088. So for those who are here in the sanctuary, why don't you make your way down to the front and present your tithe and your offering as an act of worship yes. unto the Lord. Amen. It's joy in my happy brokenness. <laughs> I got to love instead of pain. Freedom, though you captured me. I got joy instead of more. Oh, this beauty, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's beauty in my brokenness. I got true love instead of pain. Freedom, though you capture me. I got joy. I got joy instead of mourning. You give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy, give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy, me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. I've never been so free. Caught in your love for me, never been more secure knowing your heart. I've never been so free. I've never been so free. Caught in your love for me, never been more secure knowing You give me joy. You give me joy. Hallelujah. Or for the joy that you give us, that's way deep down in our soul. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for every tithe. We thank you for every offering. We release this back unto you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift and the giver. We thank you for increase and overflow, that our storehouses are full and overflowing, and we're not lacking. We thank you for this yes. in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. 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 Just a few announcements before we go into the word on this morning. Hallelujah. Don't forget tomorrow night at 530, we do have corporate prayer here in the sanctuary at 530 for one hour. 
And again, if you cannot make it out to the church for corporate prayer, set your alarm clock and to pray wherever you are as we pray corporately for the body and for the things that the Lord places on our heart. And of course, look forward to seeing you back here on midweek on Wednesday night for worship and the word at 7 p.m. It is our midweek reset. And we know we do need a midweek reset as the days go goes along. We just thank God for all that he's doing and all that he's going to do. And that is something to rejoice and look forward to, saying, Lord, what you have for us, we're ready to receive, pour how, move how you move, flow as you want to flow. Because we're not putting anything in a box. We're going to say, Lord, you have your way in this house because we don't want to hold you captive. You know, sometimes, you know, and sadly, some places do that. They will try to hold the Holy Spirit captive in a box and say, oh, we're not doing that over here at Christian Church for All Nations. We said, Lord, you flow how you want to flow and move how you want to move. And that's what we're going to kind of be talking about on this morning, talking about the windmill effect. And we'll be going into the Word of God in just a moment, but looking at the windmill effect and as I was studying and preparing I always reflect back to things in everyday life or things that I may have experienced personally myself. And this past spring in the month of May, we were able to travel to the Netherlands and see actual windmills in action, which is a pretty amazing thing. I know there's windmills all over and there's something similar to a windmill called a wind turbine. They, people try to interchange them, but they're two different things. There's a windmill and there's a wind turbine. They do also use the wind to move, henceforth, wind is in the name. And so it was as we were traveling to the Netherlands for the first time, seeing these windmills and do effect, and also getting a history, because you know, you wanna know how the windmill works and what they do to get those things to propel. Some basic things about a windmill, guess what is used for the windmill to work? Wind. Pretty obvious because it's more it's a windmill. And so wind is the driving force that makes the windmill work. And so I encourage you, if you have never seen a windmill or if you have not seen how they work, take time after service and Google the windmills in the Netherlands and you can get a whole little history lesson about how they work. And we were able to actually go inside of a actual windmill. Now you think that these things are very slender and they said that people used to live in these things. And I'm looking around this little windmill. I'm thinking, wow, it takes on a new direction of tiny houses because now that's like the big thing. People have these tiny houses that are literally maybe like 300, 400 square feet. That is great for the minimalist person because I'm thinking if you have this little tiny house, how do you fit things? But if you ever watch shows with tiny houses, people are very creative of how they store things and where they put things. So this is one way, if you need to get rid of some extra stuff, get yourself a tiny house and you will surely have to get rid of stuff. And so when you look at, if you ever get a chance to go inside a windmill, inside of a working windmill, first, it's not for those who may be claustrophobic because the space is limited. So you're in this tiny space and there are ladders that you can go up and down. And that was pretty cool. But again, I'm like, I wouldn't want to live in one, personally. I like my house with the space. But people actually, they said, would live in these windmills with their families. Can you imagine kids running up and down this little windmill? And you have to tell them, don't touch that because that may chop your head off. Things, little things like that. But it's so fascinating to watch these things in action. And one thing is I said, Lord, show me things in life, like everyday life, and how this applies to us as a believer. And so that's what we're talking about, the windmill effect. And so again, the wind is the driving force to make the windmill work. And if you look at the windmill, there are four blades. And every windmill has got these four blades. And so the function of these blades is to convert the energy of the wind and the power to lift water. And in the Netherlands, it, where we were at, there was water. And so in order for the place to not to like flood, the windmills were a part of getting things moving to lift the water so there's not some kind of crashing overflow. And so when you look at these things, they look so magnificent and they are, they're powerful. 
and the blades are a powerful tool because they have to lift, be able to use, lift their blades to lift the water. So it's not an easy task for those who were had privilege being the ones that worked in the windmill and had their families there. But the people in the time when they had active working windmills, they knew which family worked at each windmill. And they knew what a task that they had as they were the ones of the keeper of the windmill. And so the windmill, they were used as a source of electrical power. And so with all that being said, understanding the power of the wind and how it blows within the direction of the wind. And like today, it's not too windy, but some of us, you've been out there when it's really super duper windy outside where you're kind of walking kind of sideways and the wind is kind of propelling you in one direction and you're trying to go into another direction. Or if you're lucky, if you have an umbrella, that may be not the best umbrella. You pop open your umbrella, and the next thing you know, your umbrella is in a different direction than what you want it to do. And you're kind of out there trying to go against the wind, and the winds are going, everything's forcing against you. And then you come out, your hair is all soaking wet, and you're looking kind of like a crazy person. But the thing is, there is power in the effects of the wind. There is power in the effects of how the windmill works and how it flows and the direction that it turns. And so when we look at the power of the wind, it looks back to what is said in the Word of God, talking about spirit, breath, and wind. And that word comes from the Hebrew, ruha, and it's spelled R-U-A-C-H, ruha, and that means again, spirit, breath, and wind. So again, the wind propels the windmill, but the Spirit of God it what propels us as children of God. Spirit, breath, and wind. And so all this began, we look at Ruha and where it started. It started in Genesis again in the beginnings. And if you look in Genesis 1, starting with verse number 1, in the beginning, what did God do? God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void. And darkness was over the sea of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. So from the very beginning, we see the breath of God, the wind of God, the move of God already in action. We see all these things happening and how God created the heavens and the earth. And so once again, in this action, what we just read, Genesis meaning the beginnings, we see the ruha, the spirit, the breath, the wind of God, because it was what God created. I know the world will say it was a big bang theory. No, it was what God had created and that the earth was what formless and without, it was darkness, but the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. It is in his breath that propels us to move. And there, there's one thing, you know, I love to go for walks. I love to go for walking jogs and sometimes maybe a run. And so anytime that the weather is nice, even today's like today, if I have an opportunity, I wanna get out there, I wanna walk and talk with the Lord and allow him to speak to me as I'm walking and I'm talking. And I used to be one of those people when I first started to really get into exercise outside, I should say. The elements had to be conducive for me. <laughs> that means it couldn't be too hot, it couldn't be too cold, it couldn't rain, it couldn't snow. Those are my conditions <laughs> from going outside. I have since progressed. I'm like, Lord, I mean, I'll go for a walk, but you got to make sure these elements are conducive to me. I don't want to look like a little drone rat because, you know, because I would, I would look at these joggers there's some hardcore people out there. I mean, doesn't matter the season, they're out there jogging and they're trucking down the street. And I'm thinking, you're crazy. I mean, the rain's coming down, the little snow's coming down. I just, I don't know what, you know, season's here in Michigan. But there are people out there that no matter what season it is in, they're in, they're out there huffing and puffing. And you can tell them they're breathing hard, they're exercising. I'm like, they're so crazy. And then one day, I'm outside. And it's raining, and I'm walking like one of those crazy people I used to talk to about. And I'm thinking, my, how things have changed. Because it didn't matter. I'm like, let me go outside and get some exercise. And I'm like huffing and puffing. And it's the breath. We're all here. We're breathing. That means you're alive. But the thing is, when we look at it from the spiritual standpoint, 
it's the spirit of God that's within us that propels us to do these wild and crazy feasts, kind of like me outside in wintertime. Even in the wintertime, I find myself going out for walks because I feel like I need fresh air to breathe in. Amazing. You start noticing that. I need the fresh air to breathe in. Let me go outside. There's no ice. There's a little bit of snow. Just go out further. Get prepared for the elements that you're going to experience. Kind of like when we prepare ourselves to go out into this world, this dark world that we're living in, and we're breathing all the, we see all these different things that we deal with, but again, that doesn't stop us. That should not stop us as children of God. It should propel us to move forward and to go forth, because why? The Spirit of God rests in us, lives on us. In Him we live and have our moving, all our being. In Him we live. Not in we ourselves, but it's in him we live. And as we look at where it all began, it began in Genesis. And it just, just didn't stop there because in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, once again, we're going back to this ruha. Again, spirit, breath, wind. All of those things are powerful. And so we see in Genesis 2 and 7, and it says, and the Lord God form man of the dust of the ground. And what happened here? Breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And what happened with man? Man became a living being. He took what God, the Lord God took what was nothing, mere dust of the earth, and he took what was considered nothing and breathed into the nostrils and the breath of life. And his spirit gave breath to who? Adam, who became a living being. Once again, it is the power of his breath. God Almighty's breath. The power to change a situation that looks on the outside as dead. And there's a lot of things that we can take in life that this looks like a dead situation. Don't be deceived by what you see, because we know that we walk by faith and not by sight. We say, Lord, this may seem to be a dead situation, but I know you are the God that's specializing in resurrecting things that look dead or appear to be dead and breathes new life. It's that spiritual CPR. That spiritual CPR, when everything else points to not going to be changed, not going to see a difference, but when God puts his breath on it, it just cascades and it breathes new life. Again, just as the wind helps that windmill propel the water to lift that water to become that powerful energy to move that water in the right direction. So is that power is within us when we allow the Lord to propel us and to do great and mighty feats for him. It's so easy to say that what we can't do, and I'm always wanting to encourage people that we realize we can quote scripture, but the one thing is that you can quote the scripture and say, oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but you have to apply that word of God and walk that thing out. And understanding it's not you going all by yourself. It's the power of God that propels you and moves you into the direction and the flow and the things of God. We, want, we need to flow with his current, not flow against the current. Because when you start bumping against, say, Lord, I want you to do things this way. And we start to give the Lord a laundry list of what, how we want things. It's like our little grocery list. I say, Lord, if you're going to move, make sure you do it on this day at this such a time. And could you do a little bit of this and a little bit of this? Stop putting lemons on how God's going to move, because you want to say, Lord, I want to move with you. I want to flow with you. There is no limits that we put on. We take the limits off. We take our hands off and say, Lord, whatever it is that you need to do within me so that I can flow in the current that you want me to go, Lord, have your way within me. We sing songs about it all the time. We can quote scripture to her blue in the face, but we have to live this thing out loud and say, Lord, I'm ready to flow and move according to the direction you have for my life. So he breathed. 
We see in Genesis 1, the Spirit of God was there. And he, he breathed life into Adam, who became a living being. Now, as we look into the New Testament, we still see the breath of God moving through Jesus. And it says in John 20, go with me to John 20, 22. I'm going to read to you out of the Amplified Version of the Word of God. And so what it says, and when he said, and when he said this, talking about Jesus, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what it says in John 20, 22 in the Amplified Version. He breathed on them. And in the New American Standard, it reads, and when he said, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, same thing, receive the Holy Spirit. He was imparting and giving power. Jesus is talking to his disciples and breathing on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Something transferred and something transformed them. And it's the same thing as when we allow say, Lord, blow on me. Let your presence just be blown over me. Let it overtake me. Let it just pick me up and propel me and to do and go places where I may not ever been able to go before that he will give you access to the places that could be normally closed where he can unlock the door for you to walk through and breathe that what you have in you and to breathe that upon someone else. So he blew, Jesus, here we see, blew his breath on them. And within that, the breath of God, here's the difference. There was an impartation that they received. That's what happens when the breath of God takes control of us, breathing on us, living in us, moving through us. It's in the breath, and it matters. So what is blowing out of your mouth? What are you, blow what is what are you allowing to blow forth from your mouth? Are you going to be the breath of life or the breath of death? And as we look at this in this scripture, you know, sometimes people say, you, you may, maybe you've been told, you don't have to lift your hands. Like you may, somebody may have told you, oh, you have dragon breath. And if someone tells you that, guess what? It's not a compliment if they tell you we have dragon breath. Because think about it. You can have minty fresh breath. I hear I have a lifesaver. Or you can have breath that can just blow someone away, and it could not be in a very good way. And I love garlic, but let me tell you something. Garlic will stick to you. It seems like if you eat garlic, it will come out of your pores. You can brush your teeth. You can get some, some Listerine. But that garlic, it has staying power. It may be good for you, but trust and believe. You eat some garlic, it's going to stick with you. And the thing is, yes, it may stick with you, but guess what? The presence of God sticks with us, indwelling within us, so that when we go places, it lingers, because we blew, let our, the breath of the Holy Spirit blow, flow, and transform. So again, if the breath matters, what's blowing out of your mouth? Some of us, we may blow off steam and things of that nature, but as we look into the Word of God about there is the good breath of God, but we also look at Brother Saul in Acts chapter 9, verse number 1. And what did it say here? It says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. And he goes, we know that before Saul had his transformation, we're going to get to that, he was breathing out threats. So the breath that he was breathing was murderous. His, his mindset, his mission was to take down what was called those of the way, the Christian believers, and he was going to bring them bound. And so he was literally hell-bent on taking them down. And what was coming out of him was evil, murderous threats. Now, we may not have done things like that, but before Christ came into our life, guess what we were doing? We were against the Lord. So what was coming out of us was not God's breath within us. Before we came to Christ, we were in essence like Saul because we were against the Lord. And if we're against the Lord, what comes out of us is murderous, brethren, threats, thoughts, action. 
things of that nature. But what happens when we allow the Lord to transform us? He changes the breath that's within us. And no longer is those thoughts that we may have had. And think about how you were BC before Christ. Remember how you used to, and you're like, thank the Lord that that person is dead. <laughs> She's gone with the wind. Thank the Lord for that. And sometimes you think about this, and man, weren't we a train wreck before we had a collision course with the Lord? We moved in our own direction, and whatever our wind set sail to, we would just go with that flow. And now that we, on the other side, because when you look back, like, man, when I look back over my life, the song goes, when I look back over my life and think things through, I got a testimony. Thank the Lord, we have a testimony. Because what we were once were, we are no longer. He has changed the breath that flows out of us. We could have been that one. We could have party hard and things of that nature, but the breath that he gives us, us is a new life, a new breath. And here we see Paul, Saul on his mission and it goes on to say, as we just read in verse number one and verse number two, and he says, not only he went to the high priest, because again, he's hell bent on taking down the Christians. And he asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men and women, he brought them bound to Jerusalem. And here he was, he was thought he was going one way. He was on a mission, and the wind that was propelling him were as enraged towards the believers. That was the blade that was propelling him. He thought that I can just get one more of those Christians, one more of those. He thought the Christians were doing the terrorizing, and he's the one doing all the terrorizing. And he's like, I'm going to bring just one more down. I don't care if it's a woman. It didn't matter to him. In him, he was like, it didn't matter. I'm going to bring them. I'm going to take them down, bound them up. But on his way, the trajectory of his life had a collision. It was a, literally a breathtaking collision that he was stopped in his tracks. Have you ever had an experience where your breath was like literally just kind of taken away? You're just like, wow, it's happened here. And he had that very encounter. He had that very experience. And as he, and it says in the verse number three, as he was traveling, again, he's helping on his mission to take down those away, getting letters to say, hey, look, we're going to take you down. As he was on his way, being propelled by his own mission, be, be, being propelled by his own wind, being propelled by his own murderous thoughts, as he was approaching Damascus, it said he had a suddenly experience. And suddenly what happened? A light from heaven flashed all around them. Can you imagine? We may not have had a light flash around us, but guess what? A light bulb went off in our life when we had that collision course with the Lord, when we had a trajectory path change, when we had an intersection, a collision, a detour, whatever you may call it, a road construction that halted us. And now we are at a crossroad. road. And here Saul was at the crossroad of his life. And he fell to the ground, it says in verse 4, and a, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why? Why are you persecuting me? And he goes on to say in verse number 5, he said, who are you, Lord? And, he re, and it says, and he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Right there, the wind that was set beneath his wings, began to change. The blades that once were blades of anger and rage that were once clicking in one direction, now was like as there was a change and transformation in his life. Notice how it says he got up and entered, and it goes on to say, but get up, he was told, enter the city, and it will be told what you must do. There was not a delay in the transformation of Saul. Because at that moment when he had that encounter, now he was given instruction and he did as to what he was told to do. And so Saul got up from the ground, it says in verse 8. And though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And it says, and leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. Verse number 9. And he 
and he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. So he was having himself a complete fast. And I'm sure during that time, all he was thinking about, maybe his life, in a nutshell, in hindsight of how he used to be. And now here was this changed, transformed person ready to find out what his next mission was going to be now that he's being propelled by the wind of the Holy Spirit. And the Greek word for um, spirit is pneuma. So out of his breath, and out of his lungs. So that's why when you read stories about Saul, when he had his transformation, when he got, when he had a transfer of life, people were kind of leery of him like, "Mm." so Saul, you're saying you had this what experience? I mean, like Saul didn't like five minutes ago, you were breathing murder shreds like, like a couple of days ago. So now you're saying Saul, Saul, you're saying now you had this transformation. You know how we Christians are. We say we believe, but we got that little doubt on the side. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, we heard about you, and they, that was what it was. They had heard about Saul. Saul was like the hit man. So they knew. Now they're saying, okay, so now you're saying that you had this revelation on the road and that this light shone all around you. They may be thinking, have you gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puff, Saul? Are you being for real right now? Because, again, they seen how he was and what he breathed out. And now he's saying, I got a new breath that I want to blow on you. My breath has changed. Come a little closer. Catch a whiff. And they're like, mm, let me just kind of stay at arm's length disc because, yeah, I believe that the Lord could do this. But, mm, but you so? Weren't you like taking the women and the men and just kind of having them bound? But yes, the Lord paved the way. For him to have an encounter, even though that some were like, oh, he had to prove himself. And they seen that this was a changed man. And you can read in verse number 13, and Ananias answered, Lord, I heard from many about this man. Like, you, you do realize who you're sending to me. <laughs> like, Lord, are you, are you sure on this one? You know how we question the Lord, yet we say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I trust you. But Lord, you did hear about this man. The Lord's like, I'm the one that sent him to you. He's all good. Take him on in. He's, that's a brother in the Lord. And here it was. He goes on. Ananias says this. How much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. Ananias is like, look, you heard about this man. You know what he's did. You know what he's done. And he goes on in verse number 15. But the Lord said to him, But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the sons of Israel. Wow, what the, I love, I may have read this a thousand, a thousand, a thousand times, but right there, that's excitement because guess what? God is no respecter of person, that if he did it for Saul, that he can do it for your very loved ones and that he can change the path and the wind in which they're going and the breath that they're going. And now he's letting the mighty breath of God flow through him and he was used mightily as the wind of his blades changed the direction. The blades, as the windmill is powered by the wind of God, we, as the believer, have the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, the deutimous power, the wind, that breath, the Spirit of God that flows that moves through us. Once again, remember, the blades on the windmill are very strong and very powerful. And one thing that they told us when we were on the tour to keep us safe, like, don't get near the blades of the windmill. Why? You have an encounter with the blade. You're not going to have a good after effect because of the encounter. But however, the blade of the Holy Spirit, the word that we carry, guess what it does? It transforms our lives. It changes everything about us. Once we get a revelation like this is God's word. The word of God says all scripture is what God breathed. It says in the Amplified, given by what divine inspiration. 
and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training and righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. Who wrote this? Paul wrote this. The same one that was once before breathing murdering, murderous threats is now telling others like, all oh, scripture is God breathed. Why? Because the breath of God breathed new life within him. He had CPR. Christ performed a resurrection on his dead old self. And now he was a new creation. Now he was going for moving by the power of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming, declaring all these things because his breath had changed. It is his breath that fills our lungs. Kind of like this, you know, look at this little windmill here. And it blows. The Holy Spirit blows in us. And I do have some for everyone after service just to remember how the power of the Holy Spirit will flow in you. Now, what we don't want to do is go against His flow and get that mindset say, oh, Lord, how about if we blow in a different direction? The Lord says, I didn't tell you to blow in that direction. I want you to blow in the direction of I, the way I tell you. And sometimes we see these things outside, and just because we don't see the thing that's moving, we think the same thing when it comes to the Spirit of God. Like, oh, well, I don't see anything happening. Again, do you walk by faith or do you walk, do you walk by faith, not by sight? Come on now. It doesn't work both ways. Just because you don't see it moving, doesn't move, mean it's not moving. He's there, moving, flowing through us. So this right here is a reminder that his presence in us is always moving, is always flowing. We just have to be willing to say, Lord, I'm taking my hands off of what you want to do, and I'm trusting your move. I'm trusting your direction. Because what does the Spirit do? Leads, guides, directs, teaches us. Almighty breath of God, flow, as the song goes, it flow within us. Round and round, it flows. It moves. We have to be willing to say, Lord, I am just merely a vessel to work for you. I am just merely a conduit. Just as we spoke the week before last about how we are to be the light, to be that beacon of light, and how we light the place wherever we go. And it's the same manner as the lighthouse lights and gives direction, the wind of the Holy Spirit propels us, moves us. They work hand in hand. If, the caveat, if we allow the Lord to do it. Because if we say, Lord, I... We, we, we hand tie the Lord when we say, Lord, you can do this, but not that. The Lord's like, okay, once again, I can't work with you when you're like that. It has to be a full surrender, just as Saul immediately changed his direction, changed what was breathed out and what now he was breathing in. The presence of the Lord gave him new life. And it's the same thing that happens for us. The Word of God is the blade that we carry. Because again, the blades on the windmill, they're powerful. They're mighty. They have to be for the task that they're given to do to lift the water. Guess what? We're powerful in the Lord. I tell people, I may not look like much on the outside, but it's the God in me that you better be afraid of. It's the God within you that they better be afraid of, knowing that you go in the strength and the power of the Lord. The Word of God says in Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, I'm getting ready to close so if the singers and musicians can come back at this time. It says, for the Word of God, what is it? Living. Living. It's alive. It's not a dead word. The word of God is life. 
And it says this powerful, just like the blades on the windmill. Think back to the windmill. Pretend this is one of these windmills in the Netherlands. Think of the power that you carry and the power that you possess and the power that you go in to be that windmill effect on the world around you. And it says, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So you go out, you let your little light shine, and you let yourself have that windmill effect on all those around you. And say, blow the breath of God on them. And let your presence linger. Let it resonate. Let yourself be that life-giving being to this dead and dying world. Our mission is to go win the loss. Our mission is to let them know about Jesus, to let them know that they no longer have to walk on the winds of their own way, but saying there's a better way, there's a better path, and the Lord can change your direction where you're going in one way and all of a sudden the blades of your life to change, to change. Thank God for that. Thank God for new life that we have in him. What a testimony Saul had, that he would, he would later become as Paul. What a testimony that you have, that you have an effect on those around you that said, let the power of your Holy Spirit just flow like never before and say, Lord, when I say take the limits off, we really mean, Lord, take the limits off of me. Lord, that when we open our mouth, that they will understand, feel the breath of the presence of the Lord. And may they be taken away but by the mighty breath of God that's living and moving within you. Those windmills are constantly turning, lifting with power, might. And it's the same way with us that we're moving constantly in a natural, but things are moving and shifting in the spirit. Things that we don't know what's happening. Say, Lord, I may not fully understand the whole scope of things right now, but Lord, as you tell me to move, I'm going to move. As you say, move things out of the way, I'm going to move things out of the way and give me access, give me an open place and an open door so that I can walk into the place and destiny that you have for me to go forth and blow and move as he tells you to. Let's stand to our feet as we get ready to close out. Don't forget to come get your little windmill because then this is a reminder of how we are to flow and move according to the Lord's will for our life. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us power and strength in you. Now, Lord, Give, us, give those who are struggling right now, those who feel like they just don't have a voice, who feel like what they say may not matter. Lord, remind them that you've given them a voice and that you've given them your breath. And Lord God, as we take in your presence, we exhale your presence upon someone else. Lord, we will not be moved. We will not be shaken. We will not be fearful. Lord God, that you've given us not a spirit of fear. So fear, we come against you right now in the name of Jesus. We speak for life right now in the name of Jesus. We tear off fear. We tear off all bondage. We tear off doubt in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we say we're letting ourselves go onto you. We're taking our hands off and we say, Lord, as you blow. And he is blowing. He is moving and he has not stopped moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that we will go with your flow and not go against your flow. That we will walk in your flow and not walk against your flow. We rededicate that commitment right now. For those who do not know you that may be watching, Lord. Lord, make an altar wherever you are. And receive Jesus as your Lord. Acknowledge who he is. Confess, believe in him. It's so simple. Just make an altar. Don't delay. Let this be the day of your life having a transformation. 
as he did it for Saul, he will do it for you. So we just thank you, Lord, that you are our way maker, promise keeper. Everything that we need is found in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Flow, flow, flow right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you for your move right now. Pour out, pour out in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Our way maker, our promise keeper. Oh, Lord, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for the authority that we have in you. We walk in your authority and we release that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's worship and praise the Lord as we get ready to close out on today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll say, even when I don't see it, even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. Oh, hallelujah. You never stop. You never stop working. You are here. Moving in on me. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in me. Oh, thank you, I worship you. I worship you. You're the way maker. Thank you, Jesus. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Touch us, Jesus. You, you are He. Touch it in me. When we worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing them. Ooh, and I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, Jesus, make a way. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Yes. Even when I don't feel that you. Oh, you never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Oh, even when I don't see it to work. Oh, yeah. Even when I don't feel it to work. Oh, you never stop. You never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Way maker, miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Ooh, way maker. Way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, yes, Lord, we declare it. That is who you are. That is who you are. Who that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Who you are. Thank you, 
Jesus. When we bless your holy name. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Yes, Lord. Oh, we thank you once again that you are our way maker. Oh, we thank you, promise keeper, Lord. Oh, we just thank you, Lord, for all these things. We give you all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we just magnify you. We just give you the glory and the praise for you are worthy of it all. Yes, you are. Oh, what a privilege and an honor to serve you, our Lord, our Savior, our Waymaker. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you, Lord, that we're going to go forth in the strength and the might and the power of the Lord. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we go from this place, but not your presence, keep your angels of protection around us until we gather together again. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for prayer, 5.30. Wednesday night, worship in the Word at 7 p.m. Have an awesome rest of your day.